優しく抱きしめてくれとねだる瞳の奥に獲物を映して寂しく問いかける愛のありか Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer, and I am Red the Fox. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing games based on the long running manga and anime series Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third is one of the most famous animes and mangas of all time. It actually was the first manga to be made into a live action movie. That's correct. And actually, it's been made into live action movies two times one in 1974 and one in 2014. It was even made into a、uh, TV series、uh, on and off for several years. Right. Probably the most well known of all the Lupin the Third animated series is Lupin the Third Part Two, which is currently showing on Hulu right now. So, before we get into the games, let's learn a little bit of background information about the character himself, Lupin the Third. Arsene Lupin the Third, International Jewel Thief, was created by Monkey Punch, the very famous manga artist and writer in 1967. The character Lupin the Third technically wasn't an original character, as he was the grandson of Arsene Lupin, the gentleman thief. A character that was created in the early part of the 20th century and had his own series of books, movies, and short lived television shows that started from the silent films onward. Like his grandfather, although he was an international thief, he did have a sense of honor and he was a gentleman for the most part, although, to be honest with you, Lupin III was kind of a perv, to be honest with you. And like any other famous jewel thief, he had his own gang to help him out. From left to right, we have Jigen, his love interest and sometimes betrayer, Fujiko, and Goemon. And of course, every great hero or anti hero needs a nemesis or an antagonist, and that is filled by Zenigata, a member of Interpol who is constantly trying to be the one to arrest the elusive thief. There have been several animated movies and TV shows about the character Lupin III, but the most famous of them has to be Castle of Cagliostro, which was the directorial debut of probably the most famous animator and most respected, that being Hayao Miyazaki. And I realize there are many, many games about Lupin III, as it is quite a phenomenon in Japan. So, therefore, there are. A whole lot of games, and I can't cover them all, partially because I couldn't find them all, but also because this video would last for hours and hours. So I've selected a few that are my favorites among this long list. You ready to get started? Oh, yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, then, let's get into the games. In our first game for today, there is simply titled Lupin the Third. This is an arcade game published by Tato. It's a stealth game, and it was released in April 1980. Alright, l in this game, you take on the role of Lupin III, and you are doing what he does best, that being stealing. So, you are stealing these bags of money, you're trying to avoid、uh, the watchman and the guard dog, and make it to the bottom and fill up all the little money bag slots. Of course, it's、uh, not a bad game for its time period. I know the game kind of looks primitive, but don't forget it did come out in 1980. And you do got a pretty good idea of who you're supposed to be. This game was not released in the United States.、Uh, I think it was only released in Japan.、Um, and I just recently discovered it.、Uh, honestly, it's a fun game, and I think any fan of Lupin III or anyone who likes old arcade games will enjoy it. Now, our next game is Cliffhanger. This was an arcade game, and it was a Laserdisc game that was released by Stern in 1983. Now, in this game, the character's name has been changed to Cliff. And strangely enough, at this point in time, most Americans really didn't even know who Lupin III was. Yeah, that's right. As the、uh, first animated film,、uh, The Castle of Cagliostro, which this game is built on, would not even be dubbed and released in the United States until the mid 90s. And、uh, the first animated series wouldn't come to America 
in the early part of the 90s too. So for the most part, this was kind of an introduction to uh, American fans to the character. For some reason, I couldn't get game footage to record. So what you're looking at is the intro to the game Cliffhanger. Uh, I was using Daphne to do it, but for some reason I couldn't record it. So enjoy the introduction. Cliffhanger, the game that keeps you on the edge of your toes. By controlling the joystick and the action button, you determine the fate of Cliff, a lovable outcast, in his quest to rescue one beautiful, breathtaking lady. But one mistake, and you've blown it. Will Count Draco strike the first blow? Will the princess be forced to marry someone she can't stand? Will Cliff get stuck in a trap door for the rest of his life? Or will our inventive international hero leap to the rescue, only to be caught hanging around again? Whether Cliff continues his fight to give hope to the helpless is in your hands. Good luck. All right, if any of you are interested in playing the game Cliffhanger and you don't happen to have an arcade nearby that has it, uh, purchase the emulator Daphne, uh, as it has this and every other Laserdisc game from back in the day, Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2, Space Ace, and all of them. So if you know how to record the game footage from Daphne, please let me know in the comments section below or contact me via social media because I'd really like to know. And next, for the Famicom, we have Lupin the Third Pandora's Legacy. This was published by Namco. It's a platformer game, and it was released November 6, 1987. All right, now, what you do in this game? Uh, in this one, you are being one of the three members of Lupin's gang, Lupin, Goyman, or Jigen, and you're doing what they do best, stealing stuff and trying not to get caught by the police. Every time one of you lose a life, though, that person gets thrown in jail, and you can break him out with one of the other characters. It's a pretty cool game. Um, I'm not really sure of everything that's going on because a lot of it is in Japanese, but overall, I found it to be a pretty cool game. Your typical Nintendo side-scrolling platformer. But, you know, that's kind of what we at, that are fans of the NES or Famicom have pretty much gotten used to over the years. And next, for the MSX, we have Lupin III, The Castle of Cagliostro. This was published by Toho. It's an adventure game and was released in 1987. Uh, now, before we start, I got a question there. Okay, what's that? Uh, if memory serves me correctly, isn't this the uh, first time you've ever discussed a game for the MSX? Oh yeah, it sure is. Okay, the MSX, real quick, is was a game system that was released only in Japan uh, by Microsoft, and it was to be the biggest competition for the Famicom. Um, pretty cool system. They've got a large variety of games. Um, unfortunately, it didn't last that long and was never released outside of Japan, so... All right, in this game, uh, again, you play Lupin the Third. You're trying to uh, get treasure and avoid the police and these weird uh, knights that kind of come to life. And then you have Fujiko, who runs past every so often and tries to distract the uh, police from you. Um, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I thought the same thing when I first played it. It is a pretty much a ripoff of Castlevania. Yep, it pretty much is, but... Uh, not as hard as Castlevania, that's for sure. Although, to be honest, I still haven't made it past the first level. A uh, pretty fun game, and a fun game for a game system that pretty much is totally unknown outside of Japan, except for with uh, classic gamers. Now for today's trivia question. We all know that Monkey Punch was the creator of the manga of Lupin the Third. But, as I'd said before, there was a series of books that came out in the early 20th century called Lupin the First or Lupin the Gentleman Thief. Who was the writer of those books? You think you know the answer? Wait till the end and see if you're correct. And next for the Game Boy, we have Lupin the Third, Operation to Break the Safe. This was a puzzle game that was published by Ban Presto and released in April 13th, 1990. All right, in this game, you take on the role of our favorite anti-hero. And in this puzzle game, you're trying to find the key to a safe and then get in the safe and move on to the next mission. 
Unfortunately, you're going to have some people trying to stop you, like Zenigata and another thief um, that you probably remember some of the characters from the movie or the TV shows. A uh, really cool game. It can get kind of difficult if you're not used to the controls. So after you've figured out how to play the game, then you pretty much can take off from there and enjoy it. Uh, it is a really fun game with a lot of replayability, but like I said, it's not easy. But yet, the rewards are worth learning how to play it. And next up for uh, the Super Famicom, uh, otherwise known here in America as the Super NES, we have uh, Lupin the Third: Hunt for the Treasure of Legend. This is a platformer game and was released uh, December 26, 1994 by the Epoch Company. All right, in this game, once again, you take on the role of Lupin himself, and this is quite a platformer game. Honestly, out of all the games on this list, this one is my favorite. So what you're trying to do is rescue Fujiko from this bad place. Um, like Lupin in the TV show and cartoons and stuff, you actually get to do some really cool things. Um, now honestly, I don't really can't think of a game I could compare this to. It's pretty original, and I think it fits the uh, character better than just about any other game does. Um, as Famicom, or the Super Famicom, or Super NES always had some really great games a lot of them i think unappreciated but this is definitely one of those games that is a lost classic at least here in america as i believe it was a big hit in japan so if you ever get a chance to uh play a super famicom whether it's an actual one or on an emulator this is a game you really have got to try in our final game for today and uh, the last Lupin game to be released uh, so far is Lupin the Third, the greatest brain battle in history. This was released for the Nintendo DS from Namco Bandai Games, and it was released on February 11, 2010. Now, as he pointed out, this is an action and adventure puzzle game. There's one slight problem, though. Uh, what's that? The whole game's in Japanese, and there is like a half hour of talking and I don't know what the heck's going on since I don't speak Japanese. I've heard good things about this game uh, from people in Japan uh, but unfortunately if you don't speak Japanese you're not really going to be able to play this. Uh, what I can tell the storyline mode seems pretty good. The voice actors that they picked were spot on uh, but unfortunately since I don't speak Japanese I really can't tell you too much else about this game. If you speak Japanese and you've played this, uh, let me know about it in the comments section below. I'd really like to know more about this game. And now the answer to today's trivia question. What is the name of the writer that created Arsène Lupin, the Gentleman Thief? And the answer is... Maurice LeBlanc. His character Lupin the First was featured in 17 novels and 39 novellas and a collection of the novellas which grant came to a grand total of 24 books well that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of classic gamer 74 i really hope you all enjoyed it oh i sure did well i did too and if you did enjoy this you know what to do give us a great big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when i upload new episodes and don't forget to share and tell your friends and family about it in our next episode, we will be discussing the award-winning children's game series Putt-Putt. This was a very popular game series in the 90s and early 2000s, and this will be an episode for the whole family. Also in the next week's episode, we're going to have a big special announcement, so you won't want to miss that. Well, until next time, I'm Anthony Gamer, and I'm Red Del Fox. And until then, be safe, be happy, spend time with your family, social distancing, of course, and I will see you all in the next episode. Till then, have yourselves a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.